the last video, we found common monomial factors. This video, we're going to find common binomial factors. All right, so we're just going to be working on how to factor the numerator, factor the denominator, find the common binomial factors, uh, cancel out any common factors, and also find any values of x that make the expression undefined. So step number one, when you guys work through this problem with me, is make sure you write down everything that I'm writing down. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to write the numerator right here. We have 3x squared minus 30x plus 75. And that's all over. x squared minus 9x plus 20. So first thing we need to do is we need to find um, we're going to factor the numerator, and then we're going to factor the denominator. So when, we, when you're doing this, first thing you want to look for is there are any common factors to a 3, a 30, and a 75? And there actually is. You can factor out a 3 out of each of them. So we're going to factor out a 3 out of the x squared. We're going to factor a 3 out of the negative 30x, and a 3 out of the 75. So when you factor a 3 out of 3x squared, you're left with x squared. Um, when you factor a 3 out of a 30, you're going to be left with 10, so it's going to be minus 10x. And when you factor 3 out of 75, you're left with 25. Now what I'm going to do, right above this, I'm going to break this, all of this down into, it, into its prime factors. So 3x squared can be rewritten as 3 times x times x. Negative 30x can be rewritten as negative 2 times 3 times 5 times x, and 75 can be broken down into the factors of 3 times 5 times 5. So these are all what's called the prime factors. So let's check this out. You'll notice that has a 3, that has a 3, that has a 3. So that is what's called the greatest common factor that you can factor out of this numerator. So when I factor out a 3, I'm left with an x squared, right there. I'm left with a negative 2 times a 5 times an x, which becomes negative 10x. And here, 5 times 5 becomes 25. So that's kind of how you can factor out what this is called a monomial. We factor out a monomial first. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite the expression down here, and then we're going to review how to factor binomials. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do some basic binomials that, uh, sorry, basic trinomials that we're going to factor into binomials. So I say that one more time. This is called a trinomial. This is called a trinomial, but they also have factors that are binomials. So let's start with something easy. If I have x squared plus 6x plus 9. Whenever you have the number or the coefficient of 1 in front of the x squared, it's very easy to factor if they, if, if they have common factors. All you have to do is you have to look for two numbers that add up to the middle coefficient, which is 6, and two numbers that multiply together to equal the last coefficient, which is 9. So all we're looking for right now, this is in the form, this is in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. And so all we're looking for is two numbers that add up to 6 and two numbers that multiply together to equal 9. Well, that's pretty easy. That's just 3n, 3, 3n, 3. So this would factor to x plus 3 times x plus 3, also known as x plus 3 in parentheses squared. So this is called a sum of squares. This is an example of a sum of squares. That's a very common, um, you'll see those a lot, sum of squares. Here's another example of a sum of squares. We have, I'll put x squared minus 10x plus 25. We're looking for two numbers that add up together to equal negative 10, middle coefficient, two numbers whose product is 25. 
So where do you start? Don't start with the sum. Always start with the product. Well, what are the only numbers that multiply together to equal 25? 1 times 25 and 5 times 5. So you can pretty quickly see that we're going to have to use this one right here. But we're not going to use positive 5. We're going to use negative 5. Because negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. And negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. So what is this factor to? x minus 5 times x minus 5, also known as x minus 5 in parentheses squared. And that's what we have right here. We have what's called a sum of squares. So right over here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to write 3 parentheses parentheses, and I'm going to put x minus 5 and x minus 5. Now let's take a look at the denominator right here. Let's take a look at the denominator. We're going to look for two numbers whose sum is equal to negative 9, but those same two numbers have a product of positive 20. So when you're doing this, see if you can go and pause the video, see if you can find the factors and the sums, all right, that equal a negative 9 and the product when you're doing this, always start with the factors. So here's all the factors of 20. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Of these three, which one can get us to a negative 9? The only one that can get us to a negative 9 is a 4 and a 5, but they both have to be negative. So we're going to have to use a negative 4 and a negative 5. And a negative 4 and a negative 5 because they add up to negative 9, but they multiply together to equal 20. So here we go. We're going to put x minus 4 and x minus 5. Now, we've factored out the numerator. All right, the numerator is completely factored out to this. We factored out the denominator, the denominator, the two binomial, these are called binomial factors, these are binomial factors, these are binomial factors. Now I'm going to rewrite it nice and neat, right over here. So I have 3, x minus 5, x minus 5, all over x minus 4 times x minus this is in factored form, so everything has been factored. Everything's in factored form. All right, so let's take a look at this. After I have everything factored, step one, this is like step one, everything factored, all right? Step two, let's go ahead and look for numbers that make the denominator equal to zero. So like what number would you plug in there to make this equal to a 0. Well, that number is pretty easy, a 4. And what number would you have to plug in there to make it equal to 0? The number 5. So I have two numbers that make the value of um, this expression equal to 0 in the denominator. Those two numbers are 4 and 5. So I'm going to choose the answers x equals 4. I'm going to choose the answer x equals 5. So I'll be choosing those. But you'll hopefully you've seen something right here, like these, these are exactly the same. Well, if these binomials are exactly the same, that means they have the same, the, the same binomial factor. So we're going to cancel those out. x minus 5 divided by x minus 5 equals 1. And here's what you're left with. 3 parentheses, x minus 5, all over x minus 4. And I don't have to add the parentheses there. I don't... I don't technically need that those anymore. I'll just erase them. Now, this is continues to be in factored form, but if it asks you for expanded form, you better distribute. Otherwise, you will get counted wrong. So this is the exact answer in expanded form. So this is in expanded form. This is considered to be in continues to be in factor form. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and type this in now. Now, it doesn't say it has to be expanded, so you know what? I'm going to show you that you could technically leave it in 
factor to form. Oops, one second. X minus 5, and this was X minus 4. Now make sure you type in the right expression. 3 parentheses X minus 5, X minus 4. And then the numbers that make the denominator equal to 0 was 5 and 4. Make sure I got everything right. 4 and 5. That matches. That matches. All right. Let's try another question. Okay. Here we go. Well, they use Z's, and my Z's aren't very pretty, but you'll we'll have to just go with what we got. So once again, all we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the common binomial factors. This is a great example problem. I'm going to put Z squared minus 196 all over 1,372 plus 98 z minus 14 z squared. All right, so if you know your perfect squares, you know 196 is also, can be also written as uh, 14 squared. We have what's called right here, this is called a difference of squares. That's going to be important for you guys to know. The difference of Squares. We're gonna, I'm going to give you guys some examples of difference of squares. All right, here's some examples. X squared minus 1. X squared minus 4. X squared minus 9. Hopefully you guys see a pattern here, okay? So when you have a difference of squares, I want you, I want you guys to see the equivalent expression as its binomial factor. So x squared minus 1 simply factors to x plus 1 and x minus 1. x squared minus 4 factors to x plus 2, x minus 2. Hmm. You'll notice you, there's no x values in the middle, okay? So basically, right here, these two numbers, negative 1 plus positive 1 equals 0. So there's no x's in the middle, but negative 1 times positive 1 equals a negative 1. So two numbers that multiply together to equal negative 1 at the end, but they add together to equal 0 in the middle. So that kind of works out for each one of these. So these are called the difference of squares. So over here, we, this one is going to be very easily factorable. We can see that this factors to z plus 14 and z minus 14. Because negative 14 plus 14 gives me zero z's in the middle, and that product is negative 196 at the end. So this is a difference of squares. And you can kind of see the pattern that this is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, keeps going down forever. Now the denominator is a little bit trickier. One thing I want you guys to know is that you, a 14 is divisible into all of these. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to divide every single thing here by a 14 because we're going to factor out a we're going to factor out a 14. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 14. I'm going to open up a big parentheses. And then we're going to do 1,372. get 98. And you get uh, 98 divided by 14, which becomes 7. And here this becomes minus z squared which I realize it's kind of hard to, to look at when you're factoring numbers, factoring numbers out. 
All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to rearrange some things. I'm going to take that negative z squared, and I'm going to move it up front. I'm going to keep the seven z's right there in the middle. And I'm going to put the 98 in the back. So all I've done is move things around using the community property. All I've done is move things around. I've not changed the value of any of the numbers. Now, my suggestion, whenever you have a negative z squared right here, just factor out that negative. So if I factor out the negative out of each of these numbers, I'm going to have a negative 14. This will become positive z squared. This will become negative 7z. And this will become negative 98. Now that you factored out the negative, that allows you now find the two binomial factors. So what we're looking for right now is we are looking for two numbers that add up together to equal negative 7 right here and two numbers that multiply together to equal negative 98. Now if you look back you can kind of find those numbers right that we can we've already found the numbers all right it's the 14 and the 7. 14 times 7 is 98. So I'm going to put a 14 and a 7 and a 14 and a 7. But one of them has to be negative. One of them has to be positive. So which one of these has to be the one that's negative? Well, they're supposed to add up to a negative 7. So I have to make this 14 the negative one. So how do I use these numbers and finish off my binomial factors? All right, so we put x minus 14 and x plus 7 because negative 14 plus 7 is negative 7 and negative 14 times 7 is negative 98. So what are we going to do now? We're going to take this right here, have it nice and neatly factored. We're going to take that and we're going to take this. So I'm going to rewrite all of this together just down here so you guys can see it. Now, I realize I kind of changed it from messed up there. I should put Z's, not X's. Sorry. The Z and the Z. There we go. So here we go. We have a difference of squares, which was Z minus 14 and Z plus 14. And then in the denominator, we had a negative 14 that we factored out. And then we had factors left over of negative, sorry, z minus 14 and z plus 7. We have everything now in factored form. Everything's in factored form, which makes it very, very, very easy for us to figure out what numbers make the denominator equal to 0. The numbers that make the, the value for z that makes this undefined is a positive 14 and a negative 7. So what makes our answers undefined, or our expression, sorry, undefined? Where z is equal to a 14, and where z is equal to negative 7. So I'm going to choose those as my multiple choice. The last thing we're going to do, we have to find our common factors z minus 14 divided by z minus 14 is 1. So here's my expression, my simplified expression that's left. I have a z plus 14 in the numerator. and the denominator, I have negative 14, z plus 7. Now, this right here is still in factored form, but if they ask you to leave it in expanded form, if they want you to expand it, then... You can, the numerator stays the same. That is already in expanded form. But the denominator, you would have to multiply or distribute the negative 14. So you'd have to write it as negative 14z minus 98. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write it in expanded form this time. Last time I wrote it in factored form. This time I'm going to write it in expanded form. So we'll go right over here. Type in a z plus 14. A 
negative 14z minus 98. And the values that made our expression undefined for z, that's the other part. And we found those to be a 14 and a negative 7. So I'm going to put 14 and negative 7. And I'm done. Okay. Now, if you were to get one of these wrong and you wanted to kind of see how they would help you, just go here and say, see a step-by-step -step solution. And you can see what they would do. All right. So right now, they have a difference of squares right here, just like we did. Okay. We, um, they fact Right here, you can see they factored out the negative. They factored out these. They set those equal to zero. Just like I did, they canceled out the z minus 14s. And they said it was either this or this. This is in factored form. This is expanded. All right, so right now you don't have to worry about you, you don't have to worry about it being expanded, but you can still type it in in expanded form. All right. Hope this was helpful and good luck with simplifying rational expressions with common binomial.